This Bible study is going to be on sons of God in the Bible. The main text is going to be Job 38. But first, I want to take a look at the New Testament, what it says about sons of God. Okay? All right, let's see. In John chapter 1 and verse 12, But as many as received him, and they're talking about Christ, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become, to become the sons of God, even on them that believe on his name. And his name is Jesus, it's not Yeshua. Because the New Testament was written in Greek. Okay? Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. Philippians 2 and verse 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. 1 John 3 and 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear that we shall be, but we know that, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In other words, when Christ comes in shining glory, we're going to be just like he is. And the new bodies. But that's a whole other study altogether. So in the New Testament, when the believers believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're born again of the Holy Spirit, they become the sons of God. Oh, yeah. But one of the things that people run into problem-wise with the New Testament, well, the Bible in general, is when you use the New Testament to interpret the Old Testament. And that's wrong, generally. I won't say it's always wrong, but generally you got to use the Old Testament to interpret the New Testament. The Old Testament is the foundation and the walls. The New Testament is like the roof, the covering. So, let's go to Job 38. But I want to read... Um, I want to read John 1 and verse 12 again. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So they become. So when you receive him, Christ, to them gave he power to become. See, Christ gives you the Holy Spirit, the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name name. Okay, so in the New Testament, without a doubt, New, New Testament believers, born again, spirit, are sons of God, without a doubt. Go to Job 38. Here it is, Job is being spoken to by the Lord. Job 38 and verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? All right. In other words, um, you don't have the light of truth. And you're talking, but you don't know what you're talking about. That's basically what he's saying here. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. In other words, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want you to tell me the answer to what I'm asking you. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? 
Okay, where were you when I made the earth? Keep that in mind. Where was Job when the Lord created the earth? Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Now, when you stretch a line, that's a um, construction concept. You take a string and you stretch it tight, and it gives you a straight line. And then you can build according to that straight line. It's a, it's a construction trick, you know, because you want the, the wall to be straight. And that's, that's how they do it. They stretch a line out. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Verse 6. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Now, of course, the cornerstone. Who is the cornerstone? Jesus said he was the cornerstone, but that's not what this is about. <laughs> Listen carefully. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, okay. This is one complete thought. Let's go back to verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? What is the it? They're talking about when the Lord laid the foundation of the earth. Okay? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? The foundations of what? The earth. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. This is one complete thought, people. The Lord created the earth. Okay, he laid the foundations for the earth. And that's what it's all this is talking about. The measures, the line stretched, the foundations, the cornerstone laid. You know, the, the Lord's talking about creating the earth like if you were a carpenter, you, you know, when you, you start talking about the measures, stretching a line, the foundation, the cornerstone, these are all construction terms. The Lord's using construction terms to explain, okay, where were you when I made the earth? When I created the earth, where were you? And then in verse 7, Job 38, verse 7, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Why are they doing this? They were shouting for joy because the Lord created the earth. Okay? Now, I want you to think about this. The sons of God and the morning stars. They sang together and they shouted for joy when at the creation of the earth. So, think about this. If they shouted for joy at the creation of the earth, then the sons of God and the morning stars had to have come first. Wouldn't that make sense? I mean, if the earth was created... And then the, the sons of God were created after. How can they shout for joy at the creation of the earth? They had to come first. Okay, so take a look at this timeline. The morning stars and the sons of God, well, the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. So the sons of God had to come first. The earth had to come after. And then that's when the sons of God shouted for joy or, you know. 
But when did Adam come about? When did Adam come about? All right, in Genesis 1 and verse 31, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay? So here it is. The Lord on the sixth day And then the seventh day comes and they rest from the creation, right? All right, uh, let's see. Genesis 1 and verse 23. Genesis chapter 1, verse 23. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Okay? Now, if you read Genesis 1, all the way in the, uh, you know, Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2, And the earth was without form of void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So, okay, so in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So here it is, the earth exists, right? Go Now, skip to verse 23. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So obviously, the earth exists, okay? And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature, after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after his kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. So obviously the earth is already here, people. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay. Okay, go to Genesis 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them let's see let's skip down to verse 7 and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul all right. Now, I want you to think about this. God formed man of the dust of the ground. So, sons of God shouted at the creation of the earth. Sons of God come first. Then came the earth. Then Adam was created out of the earth. So think about this order of events. Sons of God first, the earth, and then Adam is created out of the ground. Are you starting to understand? Your grandfather comes first, then your father, and then you. But your average preachers will say, oh, no, 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 that's wrong. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What's the opposite of a living soul? A non-living soul. Until God breathed the breath of life, Man was not a living soul. I mean, does that make sense? So the sons of God came first, before the earth was created. The earth was created, and then Adam was created six days after the earth was created. And 
until the Lord breathed into Adam's, you know, into his breath of life, he didn't, he wasn't a living soul. He was a non-living soul, I guess. I don't know. Does that make sense? Sons of God first existed before the earth. Then the earth was created. And then man, or Adam, was created six days after the earth was made. Okay, and remember in Job 38, they were talking about the, star, the morning stars, how they shouted for joy? Well, let's take a look at something. All right, let's take a look at Revelation 1 and verse 20. Revelation's full of symbolism that draws it from the rest of the Bible. Uh, most of Revelation symbolism comes from the Old Testament. And then when people say they can't understand it when they read it, well, duh, it's because you've never bothered to read the Old Testament, you idiot. Not you people, but that's what I would tell people, but, you know. Actually, um, I think the people, um, I'm really impressed with a lot of the comments, most of the comments that you, um, the regular listeners do. Um, I learn a lot from you guys and gals. Revelation 1 and verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars, remember they were in Job 38, they talked about the morning stars and the sons of God in the same breath. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven, seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Hmm. So, in Revelation, go to Revelation chapter 12. All right, Revelation 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, are these stars angels? I say they are because if the dragon drew a bunch of stars and threw them down to the earth, wouldn't the earth burn up? I mean, come on. And if you read any commentary by almost anybody, they're going to tell you that the great red dragon is Satan, of course, and it says his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, they're talking about angels. They were cast down to the earth. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour a child as soon as it was born. So, sometimes when the Bible talks about stars, they're actually talking about suns or stars. S-U-N-S. Other times, like in this verse, they're talking about angels. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. I mean, come on. The earth would have burned up if these were real stars, right? All right, so who's this dragon? Revelation 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan. Did you cast, catch that? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels, the stars, right? And his angels were cast out with him. So let's go back to Job 38. 
All right, Job 38, verse 4. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? And like I say, the morning stars, okay, these morning stars, okay, they, stars, like the sun in the sky, they don't sing. Yeah, they make, they make noise, but, but they don't sing. So obviously, like in Revelation, when they're talking about stars, they're talking about angels. When the morning stars, or the angels, sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, in the New Testament, if you have to be born of the Holy Spirit to be a son of God, and the morning stars and the sons of God shouted for joy when the earth was created, they came before the earth, then the earth comes, and then six days later, Adam was formed, and God breathed into his uh, the breath of life, and he became a living soul. So what's the timeline? Sons of God, morning stars, the earth, six days after the earth, comes Adam. So when you read Genesis 6 about the sons of God and the daughters of men marrying and having giants for children, how can they be men? How? How can they be men? Um, if the sons of God are men in the Old Testament, um, there's only three things that I can think of. One, the sons of God in the Old Testament were the children of Adam before they had bodies, before God breathed the breath of life in them, and before they became living souls. So here it is, you've got these disembodied spirits singing and shouting for joy. Uh, that's kind of a stretch, and you can't support that from the Bible. That's, my, that's theory number one. Theory number two, uh, those of you that like Doctor Who will... Uh, catch this. If not, what can I tell you? Is that the sons of God got, talked to Doctor Who on the BBC, and then they got into the TARDIS, the time machine, and they went back in time. And the children of Adam went back in time with the TARDIS and Doctor Who, and then when God created the earth, they were watching, and then they shouted for joy. That's the second theory. Yeah, I know it's absurd. Or number three, the morning stars are angels, just like Revelation says. And the sons of God are angels also. Just, I mean, they have, it has to be. The sons of God have to be angels. They sang for joy before the earth was created. And Adam didn't come until six days after the earth was created. So either they took a time machine back when God created the earth to shout for joy, or they shouted for joy without a body, or the sons of God are angels. Take your pick. Go to Genesis 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God, okay, we're talking the Old Testament, not the New Testament, not people that have believed on Christ, not people that have been born of the Holy Spirit, born again, no. And after all, who were the, who, 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 the sons of God? Aren't angels the sons of God? I mean, after all, who's their father? Who's their mother? 
And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Daughters of men. My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants, giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And yet, these people will tell you, oh, well, these are sons of God or believers, and the daughters of men are unbelievers. No, I think I think Job 38 pretty much puts the nail in that coffin. Don't don't you think so? The Bible explains the Bible if you'll let it. I just got called a, a heretic and a false teacher by um, Sam Adams of Independence Baptist Church because I pointed this out and he didn't like it. Of course, none of the Baptist churches like it. They want you to think that the sons of God are the children of Adam and the daughters of men are sons of, well, the daughters of Adam or Cain or whatever, or, you know, and then believers and unbelievers get married and then they have giants and then that's how Goliath came to pass, um, you know. But let me tell you something. Goliath was a giant. And the Philistines were tied into the Canaanites. You know, the Canaanites, they were the ones that God commanded Israel to go in and utterly destroy them, all of them, the men, the women, the children, go in there and destroy their city with the edge of the sword and burn it with fire and why but why the flood because they were hybrids were they not god did not create the giants it was an unholy union in my opinion and i think there's no other way around us you know, it's just, you know, sons of God came before the earth, then the earth, and then Adam came six days later. How in the world can the sons of God be the children of Adam? They can't. Not, not, not in the Old Testament. The New Testament, yeah, but not in the Old. It doesn't make sense. So that's my take on it. And, um, you know, that's why the Lord commanded Israel to utterly destroy the, the Canaanites. And if you don't believe me, let's check it out. Uh, I forget if it was Abraham or Isaac. But um, in Genesis 24, 37. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell. Now the Philistines were the giants, and they're numbered among the Canaanites, among the families. Okay? They were part of the Canaanite tribes. So, and, uh, you know, the Lord utterly told Israel, wipe them out. Numbers 21.3, And the Lord hearkened, to the voice of Israel, and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place Hormah. Huh. Deuteronomy 20 and verse 17, But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, and the Amorites, the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Hmm. Wow. You know, so, and then they'll show you one verse in the Bible where I think it's uh, John's called a Canaanite. But you got to ask yourself was he of the seed of the Canaanites, the bloodline, the lineage, the family line, or did he merely live 
in the land. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, so he'd have been called a Bethlehem Bethlehemite. But yet he was of the tribe of Judah. He'd have been called a Judahite or a Jew. And yet he lived in uh, Nazareth. He was called a Nazarene. Well, they're all not the same places. You know, I was born in America. I'm called an American. But is American a race? What about if you're a German or a French? Fran you know, uh, France. You know, or you're from Africa. Generally, if you're from Africa, you're considered black, right? And if you're used to be, you know, 50 years ago, if you were from Germany, you were white and you were a German. That may not hold true today. But, uh, you know, just because somebody's born in America doesn't, I mean, somebody calls themselves an American, uh, they could become a naturalized citizen. They could be from Korea, Japan, Africa. Um, they could be from anywhere, or they could be born here. So, was John a Canaanite by bloodline? Or was he by geographical area? You know, if somebody comes and lives in America long enough, they say, well, I'm an American. They could have been born in Korea and be Oriental or Asian or whatever they call it now. I'm sorry, it wasn't John. It was Simon. John, Matthew, Matthew 10 and verse 4. Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. But you know, in Zechariah 14.21, we read, Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So, who are the sons of God in the Old Testament? Well, in the New Testament, it's most certainly born-again believers. But in the Old Testament, it has to be angels. I mean, it's inescapable. Job 38 puts the nail in that coffin. So, when you read about the Genesis 6, sons of God going into the daughters of men, they're giants born to them, the flood of Noah, and then there were... Um, giants after the flood, Goliath, that David faced. Well, you know, you got to think about it. And these these churches will teach you, oh, well, that's, the, you know, all the men, the sons of God, all the men were godly. And all those daughters of men, all those women, they were wicked. Yeah, so all the men are godly. All the women are ungodly. And then when godly and men and ungodly women get married, um, they have giants for children. Oh, yeah. Granted, you've got Tom Horn and you've got Chuck Missler and Mazzuli or whatever, all these false teachers that turn the Nephilim thing into a heresy. You could turn anything in the Bible into a heresy. Basically, I mean, you could turn the love of God and grace into a heresy if you turn it into a gross license to sin. I'm not saying you're never going to, you're going to live in sinless perfection. But, you know, if you got people that tell you that you could be a hitman for the mafia, believe in Jesus, and you're going to go to heaven. I find that a stretch myself, personally, but but the sons of God in Genesis 6 and Job 38 has to be angels, people. I, I just don't see any other way around it. So it's not a salvation issue. It's not a, an essential doctrine. But it, it explains why the Lord commanded Israel, don't marry the Canaanites and exterminate them. Kill everything that breatheth. Matter of fact, that's in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 16 and 17. But of the cities 
of these people which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. Did you catch that? Thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth, but thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. Thou shalt utterly destroy them. You know, I wonder. In John 8, 44, Jesus told the Pharisees that they were of their father, the devil. Was he joking around? Was he calling them names? You're of your father, the devil. Nah, 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 nah. Or was he telling the truth? He said he was telling the truth. Let's read John 8, 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. So was Jesus kidding around? Was he, you know, uh, calling them names? And he says, and because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Why do the churches hide this doctrine? What are the theological implications of this doctrine? Are there walking human devil hybrids walking the earth now? I don't know. I tell you what, when you look at the political nature of what's going on in the world, wouldn't surprise me one bit. Not one bit. You know, they, they, the churches now, they hide this doctrine. All the old civilizations, all, every single one of them, I don't care if you go to China, Japan, Greece, Rome, South America, the Aztecs, Mayans, the Incas, they all have legends of giants. All of them. Every stinking one of them. And they keep finding giant skeletons. And the churches hide this doctrine because they don't want us to know that perhaps devil's children walk the earth. Is it possible? I don't know. You decide. All right, well, I've been called a false teacher and a heretic because I point this out. And they want you to think that sons of God were men, the godly men, and then the daughters of men are all those ungodly women, and then Godly men and ungodly women, they get married and they have giants for children. And if that makes sense to you, what can I tell you? All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In Jesus' precious name, amen.